chili. Turn that on. Hey guys, I'm going to be starting very soon. In fact, why don't I start in the next three seconds? Uh, where is that? Hello, hello. I'm just quickly editing some things at the moment. Uh, just so people can find me. English art tradition. Oh, that's all sorted. That's good. Uh, visual drawing. Yeah, cool. All right. So, yeah, uh, I am going to be doing some El Al Algeria. Algeria illustrations so this is usually seen in corporate illustrations so uh, things that you would see possibly maybe on Facebook or on um, a variety of kind of businessy types of channels or types of um, companies what am I saying every company is a business um, corporate things so trying to explain some digital stuff etc but yeah all right let's get straight in um, do, do. Hmm. yeah so I'm super going at this really fresh and like with no ideas whatsoever at all which I guess it does pay to be more prepared but I think the best work comes out when it's spontaneous so we'll just do maybe another one there do some small ones in the corner ideas going. Um, let's draw some standing people. So, um, let's do here. Some ideas. You guys can't really see that, so I'm going to change it to a darker thing. I'll use this. So hopefully you'll be able to see a bit more. Um, I've got to go from that way to there, so people can, you guys can actually see what I'm drawing because I'm left-handed. And I've got to go the opposite of what normal people do. Well, normal people. Right. Uh, let's see. Let's go asymmetrical. So we're just gonna go with a big giant shoe here. And maybe draw that's someone's front profile. Put the shoe here. Really 
strange kind of illustrations here. Hello, hello. Uh, how, are you, how are you doing, man? From Galaxy Note 8. Whatever that was. Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to be doing. Uh, so, this stream is also going to be a bit different. I'm going to be having a podcast in the background as well. This one is called What the Comics. It's done by um, a comic book store locally around here. I know the guys. Uh, they let me use this, so I hope you guys enjoy it too. Um, they'll introduce themselves as well. This is episode so. four of What the Comics. Um, I'm your host, Troy, again. Hopefully you can hear this. Huge Oracle, Sarah Steve. Hello. <laughs> Hello. And I'm here with the vocabulary kid, Max. Say hello, can you hear <laughs> that? Hello, guys. Uh, today's episode, we're going to be talking about books that became films. Uh, there's quite a lot of them. Some of them you may not have known about. Some of them you do. Uh, you've probably read or watched them. Most likely watched most of them. Um, today, we're going to give you our top five picks of books that became films. Not necessarily just novels, comic books as well, any kind of book, really, that ended up being a film. Yeah, so to kick us off, Max is going to give us his rundown. His top five picks. Uh, so my, I only have one pick, and it's uh, Lion King is actually based on Kimba the White Lion. Disney ripped off uh, Japan, uh, so there we're done. And that's it. It's always yeah, it's always a short <laughs> one with you, isn't it? <laughs> I was waiting for like Godzilla, yeah. the novel. <laughs> yeah, because that was the that, that was the anime cool. or something, wasn't it? The, yeah, the, just a one to one rip off of it, like. Yeah, I remember hearing about that. Yeah, but some of the shots are just dead on exactly the same. It's ridiculous. Right, so... <clears throat> my first one is a movie called Predestination. Um, it is uh, very uh, strange. <laughs> it's, uh, so it's it stars Ethan Hawke, and it was directed by uh, the Spirit Brothers. They directed Daybreakers, if either of you two have ever seen that. Nope. Uh, it's like a vampire movie with... Um, Sam Neill in it. It's really, really good. But, um, oh, anyway, so no, yeah, they, they, they found yeah. them and Willem Dafoe was in it. Yes, exactly. Great movie. Um, and so, yeah, so this predestination is directed by, by those guys um, and it's based on a short story by a sci-fi writer, one of the greatest sci-fi writers. Is of it a bit too loud or Heinlein. is it alright? Um, the story is originally called All You Zombies um, and it was first published in I think fantasy and science fiction and... I read it in a collection of Robert A. Heinlein's short stories called uh, Six by H, which just means six by Heinlein. It's just six, six of his short stories. Um, but it's basically... So I don't want to give it away because I really, really love recommending this movie to people. Um, it is uh, speculative fiction on time travel and it deals with the grandfather paradox and it deals with being your own grandfather as well. Uh, it's very... Very, He's your own grandpa. It's absurd, but it's also quite grounded. Um, so, predestination is my first pick. I love the story and I love the movie. Literally being your own grandfather. 
literally being your own grandfather. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> so what is it? What is it? What is it with Heinlein? I mean, because the other work that I know him for is what was it? Um, uh, Stranger in a Strange Land, yes. where by about the midpoint of the book, it becomes a sex cult. <laughs> yeah. I oh, know he's a lunatic. He was he was so good because obviously he did, obviously he did Starship Troopers as well, which yeah. another great adaptation. That's, um, great. That's a great. And movie. he did yeah he did Moon is a Harsh Mistress. He did uh, Door in Summer. He did some phenomenal books, but yeah yeah that um, Stranger in a Strange Land is is great. How, how bad is the <laughs> time the time travel in it? Is it as bad as Back to the Future? Uh, in Predestination. <laughs> yeah. It is one of I'd say three movies that have ever got time travel down to a T and, <laughs> and almost and almost uh, like uh, void of holes okay oh, okay yeah, so many really so many cool. films try it and sort of contradict everything don't they and just kind of fuck yeah. it up or like left right and centre yeah just as a little side note as well yeah. the other two uh, time travel movies that I would recommend are Primer and Time Crimes what about Time Cop Oh yeah, oh, well, yeah. Scrap, I mean, <laughs> scrap all those other three and just watch Time Cop. Just watch Time Cop. It explains everything you need to know, <laughs> which is basically <laughs> nothing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so Predestination is my first one. I recommend the short story if you can get a hold of it. It's quite hard to get a hold of. You can probably read it online. Um, and then also the movie, which is really quite easy to watch. I'm pretty sure it was on Netflix at one point. Um, so that's number one. Uh, number two is uh, Arrival, which I'm sure everyone's heard of. Um, directed by Denis Villeneuve who directed Blade Runner 2049 he directed uh, Prisoners he directed Sicario he directed uh, he's about to direct or he's directed Dune uh, he's a phenomenal French Canadian director his French language movies that he did before all this uh, are fantastic as well so I'd recommend all them I think it's like Incendies and another one anyway um, so Denis Villeneuve directed Arrival um, which is actually based on a short story by a uh, speculative fiction writer called Ted Chiang. Um, it was first collected in, uh, well, it's most widely collected in a collection of short stories called Stories of Your Life and Others. I'm looking at two different copies of it right now um, because I'm an idiot and I forget that I already own a book and then I buy it again. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> uh, that, but that surprises me. It's original it. short story. <laughs> Why? Why? Because because you love your books so much that you've read them so much. I think you'd remember, wouldn't you? Honestly, I just buy so many, Maybe and I just it. forget. So I've got I've literally I'm looking at two copies of it right now, and I don't. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so so based on a short story by an author called Ted Chiang, um, and it's uh, a story about the futility of an attempt at contacting uh, an an intelligent species. Um, once again, everyone probably knows about Arrival, so you know I don't really need to go into too much detail about it. But it, the themes are about like language and, like I said, about communication and determinism as well. Like what we've done will affect what we will do, um, and it's phenomenal. the 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 story is heart wrenching, and the movie hits that mark so so well. Um, it's not often that like so with predestination great movie and great story but i don't really think the movie actually hits the mark as well as arrival hits the mark with story of your life which is what the short story is called um and it is just terrific like i said heart-wrenching and just i i can't sing its praise enough i gush over this movie it's <laughs> one of my favorite movies of all time um and another cool little thing actually it's written by eric heiserer um, and I don't know if you two know who Eric Heisler is, but he wrote Secret Weapons for Valiant. He wrote um, Harbinger Wars 2 for Valiant as well. Um, well that's cool. Didn't and know that. He's a, yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, he's a, a great writer as well. And he also wrote um, Lone Wolf and Cub um, 2100, which, bringing it back to the adaptation thing, Lone Wolf and Cub, obviously the original Lone Wolf and Cub manga was made into a series of great movies. Um, but yeah, so Arrival, number two, and the short stories, Stories of Your Life, and others, uh, but the actual s short story is called Story of Your Life. I can't recommend that enough. So, Arrival, amazing. Is it? What's it about? Aliens and that? Yeah. So it's it's about, uh, like I said, it's about uh, the yeah, like the futility of our attempt at contacting 
uh, intelligent life, like extraterrestrial life, um, and how you know movies and things always present it as you know we're just having a. You know, I mean, apart from maybe Close Encounters of the Third Kind, most movies present it as you know we we'll probably be able to just chat to them because they're so smart they can talk in our language. Um, <laughs> but the story of a life and arrival is more about how impossibly difficult it would be to actually communicate with these beings, and it's such a great concept. Yeah, that makes way more sense, actually. Well, it is. So if you think about animals, like, you know, amongst us on our planet, how difficult it is to communicate with animals, it would be the same thing. (laughs) Exactly. Well, I mean, it's like you can compare it to dead languages that we had. The only reason we got lucky with, say, like, the hieroglyphics of ancient Egypt is because we found a translation tablet. Yeah, Before that, we had no idea. It was just like, yep, yep, no, we're screwed. Oh look, there's a tablet. We got we got lucky. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I saw that tablet in the museum. I'm cultured. <laughs> <laughs> I thought like you saw that tablet and uh, I swallowed it and I got high. That's not the same tablet in Night of the Museum though, is it? <laughs> when we talk about the same the same one, right? Not the Rosetta Stone. We're talking about the yeah. tablet the tablet of Ra or whatever it was called. Right. Oh god. Right. But uh, cool. yeah, so Arrival by Denis Villeneuve, story by Ted Chang. Um, and then my third one is Stalker, um, or the movie Stalker, uh, directed by Andrei Tarkovsky. Um, Andrei Tarkovsky, I'm going to talk about him again soon, actually, because he is phenomenal. One of the greatest movie directors of all time. Uh, he was a Soviet uh, filmmaker, um, mostly made movies in the uh, like 60s and 70s and 80s. Um, but anyway, so Stalker uh, is based on a, a speculative fiction novel by... Two brothers called Boris and Arkady Strigatsky, or Arkady Strigatsky, um, and the original novel is called Roadside Picnic. Um, and hey, hey! Uh, uh, well. I am um, trying to do some contemporary illustrations right now, so I'm just building up things which I'll be working in um, Illustrator later on. So uh, yeah, I'm doing a few um, ideas right now. Um, nothing. Um, major in particular, but it's just some ideas, really. Uh, I'll, I have no idea really what I'm doing. Just let my mind just kind of take it somewhere, and if it takes it somewhere, then awesome. If not, then well, probably pays to be a bit more prepared for putting one of these uh, streams on. How are you, man? Where aliens have come to Earth and left, basically. They just came, um, did their thing, and left. They didn't communicate with anything. Um, they just sort of came and, and fucked off. And good, 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 good. Yeah. Um, what you might be able to hear in the background is just a mate stream. I'm trying to make the kind of channel a bit more kind of active sounding. So this is a bit of a test to see if it's working out. I need to find a pause button because this is on Spotify but I'm using Spotify for music and yeah (laughs) there we go Uh, yeah what are you drawing man certain things can affect like you know electromagnetism and things like that um and the point of the book is basically a, a, a person's role a person is called a stalker their job their role is called a stalker and their what they do is they bring people into these zones where the aliens came um and they bring them in or i'm um, getting this mixed up with the movie sorry um so what they do is they go into these zones uh where uh, I'm drawing a post up on my cartoon. Oh yeah, is it um, any particular type of cartoon? Is it Asian style? Is it Western or your own kind of um, kind of style? I guess children's. Well, it's speculative fiction, so it's very. There's way more to it than just oh, you know, spooky aliens doing their spooky spook. Um, <laughs> and it's very, very nuanced and very, very smart. Um, and yeah, that's stalk of the movie. Tell me a bit about that. So it's it's a Soviet movie. So it's and it's an Andrei Tarkovsky Soviet movie. 
Uh, well, the cartoon itself is not finished, but it designed looked like a 1930s. So, um, kind of in the pre-Disney area, Betty Boop style, that sort of thing. I, I can't remember what his name was, who did that kind of thing. But um, is it? Am I on Felix the Cat sort of genre? Or am I like really way off? Max Fletcher. Yeah, that's it. Did you know the Will Ferrell video game? Yes, I did actually. Yeah, what's what's it called again? Stalker. Yeah, oh, it is called Stalker. Yeah, Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl. Stalker Clear Sky. Stalker Call of Pripyat. And then next year there's going to be well, there won't this year. Sorry, there's supposed to be Stalker Two. Oh wow, that's really cool. Yeah, because I, I remember reading something a few years ago, like uh, all done drawing, drawing yet. Yeah. Cool, cool. Um, I'd love to see it, man. Like, if you put it on the Discord channel, I'm sure to definitely. <laughs> we'd see it then. But it's cool if you do want to. But I'm always intrigued by seeing other people's work because. Uh, it helps with inspiration and it helps me kind of go, ah, people actually draw. I'm not the only one. Okay, I'll just leave that there. Let's find another idea. sketchbook goes through so fast I need a new one about every week I am about the same with buying tons of sketchbooks though my sketchbooks if I literally pick one up right now is one let's see what's in it I accidentally don't draw anything because I get far too protective on it because I'm like oh it has to have something good into it I can't draw anything in that it will be a waste if I draw something really bad so yeah I'm never a, a fan to draw anything in it however I'm changing that um, since the lockdown kind of started I was able to kind of just stop um, not putting work in my work because um, I need to get into illustrating a bit more, which I'm doing right now. So um, e almost every day I'm making something. Um, about last session I did, I was making rugs. So this was one of the rugs that kind of came through. Uh, the session before that I was, I think I was either book binding or no, I was doing some automatic illustrations. So automatic illustrations are literally having a scribble on the side and then trying to find some image in, in front of it by using this thing called pareidolia. Pareidolia, it, in short, is really um, creating things from faces, like looking, seeing faces in things. What's going on with this? There we go. Sorted. Uh, so I did a lot of that. So um, I would say I'm a variety artist, only because I've had to work with a load of commercial companies and everyone wanting something different. Usually they're like, oh, can you make this for me? Because I like this style. And I'm like, stupidly going, um, yeah, I can do that. And I do it kind of half-assed, unfortunately. So I'm now kind of developing some sort of style so people can go and look at my portfolio and say, ah, oh, you do that. Well, I want that. 
but then gives them options. Not that I would give it a go with what they actually want as well. Our sketchbooks can that. That's what sketchbooks are for. <laughs> Brainstorming, putting ideas down and experimenting. Yeah, definitely man. I think um, it's originally I was just a collector of art materials thinking, oh, I need to have this thing in order to do that thing. And then it's like, oh, but I need this thing to do that thing. So I can't possibly pick up that thing before I've got this thing. And that cycle came through. And now I've just gone, well, I've got everything now. And I've figured out that I was only buying stuff on the fact that it was, I was telling myself that I had to have all of this in order to make something, but I didn't have enough time to do it. And then I completely forgot that I actually had it. And yeah, the, that cycle continued for a while. And then the pandemic came and now I've got time to do everything. And now I don't want to do it. But I've kind of given myself that idea that if I don't use it within the month that I've got it, I don't need it, so I gotta get rid of it. Right, uh, let's see. Just finished the poster. Oh man, send it over. Uh, I think if you're looking at my channel, there should be like a Discord thing on the bottom. I'll actually copy the link address. Not that I'm trying to catch you into this, but definitely love seeing work. There we go. Nice. Your guy, Riley. I love it. Let's see. I don't know. Talk. Nice, you put it in the art talk. Ah, oh, sick. Well, did you use a? Uh, are you using Posca or are you using like a ballpoint pen? Or just fine liners? Or not, neither, just actual ink and. So, two Karen and Kevin in love though. Nice. Yeah, I see the Max Fletcher style. Sharpie, nice. If, um, are you finding it quite stiff? When you're on the paper at all because i probably would recommend maybe some acrylic um pens like these uni posca ones they're pretty easy to kind of work for in there quite solid in color so you don't get much bleeding on the bottom well you don't get any bleeding on the bottom so here it's all clean whereas um i'm guessing if you flip that around you might have some bleed through yeah i don't usually use a sharpie but I don't like doing it as a challenge. Nice. 
Yeah, I, I'm always forgetting to put like a piece of paper underneath when I'm working on inks, because I'm a bit of a potato in that sense. Is is that the type of particular style that you're more more so into? Um, was there any reason why you kind of got influenced into it? small guy with a big fur. Well it's only a style I've drawn in because I love it so much. The style is such a big part of my life because I've been watching the 1930s cartoons my whole life and drawing that style is so cool. That's pretty dope. I think a lot of artists kind of ha relate can relate to you on that, especially myself. Um, uh, I kind of became unfortunately or fortunately uh, a weeb on the basis at boarding school well I was sent to boarding school because I couldn't read write or anything I was an absolute mega potato in a way because uh, I suffered from dyslexia and dyspraxia so at the age of 12 I still had the reading writing and speaking age and a mentality of a six-year-old um, but sent to boarding school I was surrounded by a lot of Chinese, Japanese, um, foreign um, exchange students and I got on with them quite well and they had these books which um, I was so used to reading things like The Beano or um, Dandy, the American comic version, Mad Magazine, that sort of stuff. Um, and they had these really graphic, gory intense story romantic overly romanticized overly exaggerated character books and they had two of them one in their language one in uh, english and yeah it was manga books and i just fell massively in love with it because one the writing was small i could understand it, it had a lot of body language in it it made me understand how people's body language was because it was so exaggerated so it kind of um, drew, I could absorb it further, as well as there was some speech next to it, which made me go, ah, so that's what that guy was talking about. And that's how they expressed themselves like that. And yeah, I completely um, exploded from something at the age of 15. I was kind of more cognitively or socially aware of things as if I was 21 years old than being 17. Oh, 15, sorry. So, yeah, uh, that's kind of what also got me into art because of how expressive it can be, the narrative that you can put through through body language. Um, because, to be honest, speaking is actually more primitive than our body language. It's weird because it takes more off effort to speak out on something or write something down than it is to be um, actionable on it, though your actions will can speak louder than your words in a small vicinity. Your words will speak louder in a larger aspect and can be more recorded and more permanent, but it is unfortunately more primitive. That's my view on it, really, but yeah, so that was me rambling. Right, let's get another thing done. Uh, ponytail. Did you do Let's just start with something.
what's going on here. Da, da, da. It's weird that I can draw circles better than squares. They, that's a talent to have. <laughs> um, luckily, all you need is a ruler for a square. With circles, it's a bit more, oh, you need to have a protractor or a compass. So, yeah, I'd love to be better at drawing circles than squares. Oh, actually, I can see something here. What we got? Oh. kind of creeping out like that World War II character. Um, because I'm so used to drawing no points because of the 1930s stars are very all-round shapes. Yeah, though most backgrounds are quite um, straight, though they do have some sort of curvature. Um, I guess that is um, the use of expressionism and the not trying to be too anatomically correct. It's more gestural though um, these animators or illustrators did use this thing called rotoscoping. Rotoscoping is, I, I, I'm act, talking to you as if you don't know what this is or being very, um, what's it called, pedantic or is it patronizing? Uh, so if I'm being too patronizing, I'm sorry. Um, but for those who don't know it, yeah, rotoscoping um, is literally them illustrating on top of a figure drawing and then exaggerating those movements. Um, or you can literally do it, draw it straight from what it was. Like I know um, the Lord of the Rings, the animated film, they rotoscope and it's literally straight on drawing what is the, the picture itself or the imagery. Um, but I guess with the benefits of rotoscoping you can put them in whatever background or scenery that you want in comparison to literally no uh, Max Hatchett invented rotoscoping he did he, he well he possibly did it for um, animation though rotoscoping might have been recognised beforehand like there's a lot of other things um, if you look at traditional well, in the 1800s when they had the projector, uh, it wasn't photography in itself, um, but they did draw on top of these photos to create these characters. So uh, Max Factor must have kind of moved it forward or took ownership of it. He's probably a l mostly recognised for it. Like, for instance, Michelangelo, how his style or work, uh, <laughs> technically... 10% of Michelangelo's work is actually done by Michelangelo. The other 90% was actually created by his assistants. Uh, the man who created the light bulb was not actually... Um, what's his name? Light bulb dude. Um, it was actually done by um, 
one of his it was it was even an assistant or someone in actually no there were two there was um his and then another guy who made his earlier but because he wasn't american or because he wasn't um what you call it of the welfare he was um black and um they were just completely racist they literally stole his idea and made a cheap knockoff of his uh, light bulb. In actual fact, his was actually much more amazing. But because he was black, um, yeah, they were like, no, can't have that. Those people, rah, 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 rah. I was like, fucking hell. So with your style, um, a great recommendation, for you, not that I should be recommending you anything because I'm a terrible artist, uh, a great suggestion for yourself would be having a check out uh, Steel Like an Artist. It kind of talks about how different artists um, kind of literally do steal off other artists, but they steal in a way which is um, a good thing. So say for instance, we wouldn't be we would still be doing k paintings if um we weren't stealing off each other or taking off each other's inspiration uh still like an artist he kind of talks about like how there is a collection of different styles and artwork which inspires you becomes essentially now amalg amalgamated into your own style um i think i want to give a good example pablo picasso did, did a lot of this um he was inspired by a lot of futurist illustrators and contemporary artists of his time and yeah just his style he wanted to he wanted to make a message he wanted to create 3d imagery from a 2d platform so that's why his work kind of looks in that perception but also it had a style in which people kind of liked and wanted to go for also it was easy for him to do which is another thing which you should look into when creating your style make your work as easy as possible for yourself provided you can communicate it as best as possible at the same time if realism is something easy for you to do then do that if not find something that kind of works towards your own message because you know finding your place in the world you don't have to be this amazing artist you don't have to draw like a, a realistic person there are other people who will do that and that's great but maybe that's not your style. So, yeah. And don't go, oh, uh, and don't feel that, oh, because someone else draws like this, you can't draw like that. Because you'll have a different set of ideas than that person does. Um, it's very, especially at university, you're surrounded by loads of different artists. You might feel, like, really scared to kind of essentially copy that other artist or do their style so that is it uh yeah it's very unfortunate and the fact that early animation has a lot of racism in it oh definitely um uh it's definitely a sad thing uh but it's it's very strange because um No, I'd rather not get into that. Let's continue with this anyway. Um, let's do someone in a beanie.
Did you ever watch Tom and Jerry Made Before by the Mouse and Cat? Oh, as in, like, literally Tom and Jerry, Warner Brothers Tom and Jerry. Oh, um, are you talking about Tom's um, actual owner? Like, th there's huge racism in that sort of thing. The original Van Brewer ones. Yeah. I think still in the 90s, they were still able to put on that stuff. Because, um, say for instance, they it, they considered it, it, because it was a cartoon, they could say whatever the fuck they want. Because technically, in their vision, it's not racism, because it's a drawing. Which is weird. Um, like, right now, Big Mouth is that weird 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 grey almost black area on the fact that it's technically paedophilia but it's not because it's a drawing Hey Vitman C, how's it going? Did your um, computer get super optimized from when we were last talking? Oh, I don't mean the mouse and cat. I mean like the one from the 1930s by Maddie Boomer Brewers. The radio pictures. I think I did. But it's I've seen a lot of stuff, man. Like, I've seen a lot of stuff. Um, I think on the next page, I'm going to focus on looking at different kinds of um, poses. And then I'm going to exaggerate them. Might also work on a small theme as well. I do like the movement in that. Kind of <laughs> Keith Herring like. Um, it's the human Tom and Jerry. So they're like three stooges in a way. All sorted now. Nice man. Uh, let me go. Oh, yeah, the very uh, kind of Max Fletcher style. Sorry, it is. <laughs> Got some. As you can see where Disney probably stole a lot of. Um, what should we call it? Vibes. Um, Tom and Jerry vibes. got like the idea of Popeye as well oh my god looking at these black skeletons why do they have like giant lips that's oh my god fucking hell stuff on here man Wait. 
Actually, there's a lot of blackface on here as well. Or minstrelling. Oh man. <laughs> I've, ju I've just seen them, man. I was just looking on Google. Right, let's uh, get. Actually, we were. Yeah, we will. We'll still do that. Gives me an idea of what I should be doing. But we'll make some more space. does I think um, well there is a lot of ma modern versions of it as well like say for instance if you look at a lot of anime it's very big titted and all this stuff so it can have a s s well, sexualist sort of vibes ma um, not masochist um, It's very sexist. There we go. We'll use that. Um, but you'll get it in a lot. And I think the only thing is, is take the good bits from it and sieve out the bad stuff. I've got to go and do school. Sick man. Yeah. Catch you later. Have a good one.
think that's all I gotta do today then. I'll get some more done tomorrow. Uh, yeah, it's a short stream today. So, yeah. Alright. 